In this video I will show you how to make a necklace, a bone necklace, using this handmade uh, bone pendant, this Thor hammer bone pendant, and um, some black cord. I will also use the lighter for the to burn the ends of the cord, of the nylon cord, and the scissors to cut the cord. So, in order to make a sliding knot cord, I will find the middle of the cord, this way, and I will put this part of the cord over the other one, and I will measure about four fingers, and I will bend the cord this way. And now I will superpose the two cords this way. And now I will take this shorter cord here and turn it around the other two cords, keeping this loop over here. And now I will put the end of the cord, this end of the cord, underneath these other cords. So I put it underneath two of the cords, now I'll put it under the third cord this way under these two, uh, three loops and I have this end of the cord here and now I will take the end of the cord and put it through the first loop that I left here so I'll put it around the other cord and take it out through this loop here And now I'll pull on this uh, knot this way. And I have created the sliding knot, which goes up and down this way. And I have this end of the cord here. And I will simply take the scissors and cut the cord end this way. And I will burn the end of the cord using the lighter. And now the one of the knots of the sliding knots is ready. And now let's do the same with the other knot. So I have this cord here and let's uh, make the second knot. So I have um, measured about four fingers. Now I'm bending the cord this way and I'm leaving this loop over here. And I'm turning the cord around the other two cords.
and now I am putting the end of the cord underneath the first loop then underneath the second loop And now I'll put it underneath the third loop and take it out through this loop at the end of the cord this way. Like this. So I have the end of the cord here and now I'm pulling on this knot this way so that the knot closes, the sliding knot closes. And <clears throat> now I have this end of the cord here. I will cut a little bit of the end of the cord. this way and I will take the lighter and burn this cord end this way and the second knot, sliding knot is also ready and the necklace the cord necklace is finished. I all, uh, all I have to do now is uh, add the pendant to the necklace. So I will look for the middle of the cord and I will put the cord through the pendant this way and I will make this loop this way and create this not over here. And now the necklace with sliding knot and with a bone pendant is ready. So let's make the necklace a bit smaller this way. So this is the finished necklace with bone pendant and with sliding knots with black cord and sliding knots. So as you can see uh, it is very easy to make such a necklace. All you need is the pendant and a piece of black cord and these two tools. I will show you how to create a necklace using a bone pendant. So I will use this handmade bone pendant with runes carved on it. Uh, this is uh, Gangnir. It is the Spear of Destiny or the Spear of the God Odin from the Norse mythology and it is also ornated with some runes. So this will be the pendant and I will use some black cord, some black nylon cord to make the necklace. I will use some findings, so I have the findings here and I will also use these tools. Let's begin by talking about the findings. So I will use some jump rings in order to open and close the necklace. A lobster claw clasp also to open and to close the necklace. And for the cord ends I will use these spring cord ends. 
So these will be the findings that I will use. And now let's also talk about the tools. As you can see here, I have different tools. I have some pliers. And as you can see, this pair of pliers has some teeth on the surface here, whereas this pair of pliers is flat. The purpose of uh, this pair of pliers, the reason why this pair of pliers is flat here, is because uh, it will not scratch the surface of the findings. Because it doesn't have these small teeth here, so it will uh, not scratch the um, uh, findings, making them less shiny or inesthetic. Uh, this type of pliers are called the chain nose pliers, and they are made specifically for the for jewelry making and uh, for bending and uh, handling uh, those metal findings. For jewelry. You can also use this type of pliers but you should be very careful because the teeth here on the surface may scratch the metal parts of the jewelry. So I recommend to, that you use the chain nose pliers. Um, beside the chain nose pliers uh, I also have this ring. This is a jump ring opener and um, you can open and close the jump rings by grabbing the jump ring with the pliers and putting it into this ring like this and then you can open and close the jump ring. I will show you immediately as soon as I start making the necklace. Um, as you can see here I have two more tools. This is a pair of scissors in order to cut the cord. So it's very useful to have to always have a pair of scissors when you're working when you're making your own handmade jewelry, and uh, <clears throat> because this uh, cord is a nylon cord, uh, I also have um, a lighter because I can burn the end of the cord with this lighter. And uh, now let's uh, begin making the necklace. So, um, I will first take this cord and as you can see here, it needs to be burnt a little bit so that it gets more pointy. So I've burnt a little bit the end of the cord and now Let's see from a closer distance. Um, I have this end of the cord here. I will take one of those cord ends and I will put the end of the cord inside this cord end. This way, so I, as you can see the cord is almost coming out on this other side of the cord but I will stop here so that the end of the cord is not visible on this uh, end of the um, on this uh, spring cord end and now as you can see I have this spring here so you can see this end of the spring over here So this end here of the spring will be, I will press on this end of the spring here so that it grabs the cord and the spring cord end doesn't come out of the cord anymore. So I have pushed on the end of this coil here and now this end of the spring is pushing on the cord and this way the 
chord end does not come out from here so it does not come out from the uh, nylon cord now as you can see here I have this little ring here and uh, I will grab the ring like this with the pliers and lift it this way so as you can see here I have a ring uh, I will attach to this ring one of those jump rings this way and on this jump ring I will also attach the lobster claw clasp now let's see how I do that I will show you from a little bit of a distance so that you can see exactly what tools I will use so I will use the chain nose pliers that I talked to you about before the chain nose pliers that have a flat surface here and the jump ring opener and let's see how I will use the jump ring opener to open and to close the jump ring so I have grabbed the jump ring with the pliers and I put the jump ring into this jump ring opener and I have opened the jump ring this way now I take the ring of this, the, the cord end and put it on the jump ring this way then I will take the, the lobster claw clasp and also put it on the jump ring like this and now I grab the end of the jump ring and close it I will also use the pliers and close the jump ring this way and now I have closed the jump ring and attached the lobster claw clasp so this was one end of the nylon cord and now I have the other end of the nylon cord and again I will do the same steps I will first use the lighter to burn the end of the cord this way I will put the end of the cord inside the spring the cord end this way so now the black cord is inside this cord end again I will look for the end of this coil here this way so this is the end of the cord of the coil and I will press on this uh, cord um, spring end here on this metal end of the spring so that the metal part here is pressing on the nylon cord this way so as you can see the end of this spring is now pressing on the nylon cord so that the nylon cord does not come out And again I will lift the ring at the end of the cord end this way and I will take this jump ring and attach it to this ring here I will do the same steps I will grab the ring with the pliers with the chain nose pliers and open it with the jump ring opener I will put the ring on the cord end grab the ring this way and close it
and now I have attached this ring at the end of the cord. Now I have finished the cord and I will find the middle of the cord this way and put the cord like this through the pendant and now I will take the end of the cord this way through the pendant and now I have also attached the bone pendant to the necklace and let's see what the finished necklace looks like I will simply close the necklace this way and this is what the finished necklace with the bone pendant looks like necklace using seed beads and white seed beads nylon thread and the tools I will use a pair of uh, chain nose pliers a lighter a jump ring opener a big eye beading needle a pair of scissors and I will also use some findings I will use crimps bead ends a lobster claw clasp and some jump rings now let's begin making the necklace first of all I will take the thread and make some knots at the end of the thread Now let's make one more knot here, like this, and I will burn the end of this thread a bit, like this, and I will put this thread on the mm, big eye beading needle, so I open the needle like this and put the thread through this needle, this way. Now I will take one of those crimps and put the crimp, this crimp, on the needle, like this. So that it doesn't come out. I will use the pliers to press on the crimp like this. And now I will put a bead end on the needle this way. like this and now I will close 
the bead end this way I will take a jump ring grab the jump ring with the pliers and open it with the jump ring opener put the jump ring through the bead end like this I will take the lobster claw clasp and put it on the jump ring this way and I will close the jump ring this way so this end of the necklace is ready and now let's put some brown beads like this and then I will put some white beads as well So I'll put a white bead, a black bead, and another white bead, this way, and I'll put some more brown beads. like this and again I'll put a white bead a black bead a white bead like this and um, the necklace is ready now bead end first of all on the needle like this and I will also take a crimp and put the crimp on the needle I 
I'll put the needle away. I'll press on the crimp. I will make some knots above the crimp so that the cream doesn't slide off the thread. Like this. Now I will cut the thread and I will use the lighter to burn the end of the thread. Like this. And now I will close the bead end. With the pliers. And I will take the jump ring and um, I will open it using the pliers, the chinos pliers and the jump ring opener like this. I have opened the jump ring and I'll put the jump ring on the bead end and now I grab it with the pliers and close it like this and now the necklace is ready let's see what it looks like This is the silk necklace. I will show you how to make a choker using this black uh, ribbon, velvet ribbon, uh, some uh, um, ribbon ends, metal ends, jump rings, a bail, a pendant. A metal pendant, an extender chain, a lobster claw clasp, and as tools I will use the um, pliers, the chain of pliers, and the jump ring opener. Now let's take the ribbon and put the a ribbon end at the end of this ribbon and close the ribbon end like this so it shouldn't come out this way now I will uh, put the bail on this um, ribbon like this so I will take the ribbon uh, out through this bail like this and I will find the middle of this ribbon this way 
and now at the other end of the ribbon I will put the other ribbon end take the pliers and close the ribbon end like this this way. So I'll make sure that the ribbon doesn't come out. And now let's uh, attach the pendant, the metal pendant. In order to attach this pendant I will take this jump ring, grab it with the pliers, with the chain nose pliers, like this. Open it with the jump ring opener like this, put it through the bail, let's open it a bit more, now I hope that it does go through the bail now, and I will also put the pendant. Now I grab again the ring, the jump ring, and close it. This way. So I have now um, attached the pendant to this bail. And now let's take the chain and attach it to this ribbon here. I will grab the jump ring, open it and put the chain through the Uh, jump ring like this and I'll put the jump ring on the ribbon end this way. Now I'll grab again the jump ring with the pliers and with the jump ring opener I will close it like this and now at this other end I'll take another one of those jump rings open it Like this, put the jump ring, uh, the lobster claw clasp, and I'll put the uh, jump ring on the ribbon end. Like this. I'll grab it with the pliers and the uh, choker is ready. Now let's see what it looks like. Let's close the choker. like this and this is the finished choker so this is what the choker looks like let's see it from a closer distance
I will show you how to make an anklet using a cowrie shell and some cord. Um, I will use two longer pieces of cord. So these pieces of cord will be about 25 centimeters long, 20 or 25 centimeters long. And then I will use another shorter piece of cord of about 15 to 20 centimeters long in order to make the sliding knot. Uh, as tools I will use a pair of scissors. And now let's begin making the uh, anklet. I will put the shorter cord away and I will take the so our friend is again talking I don't know exactly what he's saying Rudolf what are you doing there Rudolf <laughs> Rudolf what are you doing there <laughs> Do you want to let me make the anklet? So, our kitten has studied what we were doing here and now that he knows what I was doing he left uh, well as people say curiosity killed the cat <laughs> so I hope that my kitten will not be so curious and that he will always be safe so as usual he is curious and he wants to know what I am doing Um, now let's uh, make the let's begin making the anklet uh, in order to start making the anklet I will take the cord and put it through the cowrie shell like this and now that I have put the cord through the shell, I will make a knot. I will take one of the cords, put it over the other cord, like this, and create a loop. I will make the loop smaller, like this, and I will take the cord and put it through this loop like this. And I will tighten the loop. And this way I have created the first knot. Now I will do the same on this other side. I will put the cord through the shell like this and I will take one of the cords and put it over the other cord like this to create a loop like this and
I will put the cord through the loop to create the knot. like this. So as you can see, I now have a knot on each side of the shell so that the shell doesn't move on these cords. Now I have made a knot at both ends of the anklet and I will also make a knot here at the end of the cord one knot here and another knot at the other end of the cord like this. So I have two knots on both ends of the cowrie shell and I have a knot at the end of the cord here. And now let's close the anklet. I will superpose these two cords and I will take the third cord that I prepared for the sliding knot. In order to make the sliding knot, I will superpose these two ends of the cord and I'll find the middle of the cord. I will put this cord under the two cords, like this, and I will make a knot here, like this. So I made a simple overhand knot. Let's see from a closer distance. And now I will start making the sliding knot. I will make a loop, first of all on the right side. Then, after I make the first knot, I will make the second loop on the left side. Then I make another knot. Then I again make a loop on the right side. And then on the left side. And I will continue making knots until there is no more cord. So let's see how I do that. So I make a loop like this. I put the cord from the right side over the two cords. Then I take the uh, cord on the left side, put it over the cord that came from the right side and under the two cords here like this. So under these two cords here. And now I will take the cord and put it from below and take it out like this through the loop that I created. And I make the first knot like this. So as you can see we have made the first knot of the sliding knot. Now, as I've told you before, I will make another loop, but on the left side. Then I take the cord from the right side, put it over this cord, put it under the two cords like this, and then take it out through this loop, this way, like this. And I have created the second knot of the sliding knot. So I have two knots here. And let's continue. I will make another knot on the right side again. I take the cord from the left side, put it over this cord and take it under the two cords to the right side and now I will take it out through this loop here
and I made a third knot. Again, I make a loop on the left side, put the cord over this other cord that I brought from the left side, under the two cords like this, and then I will take it out through this loop here. And I have the fourth knot. Now, again, I make a loop on this side and I take this other cord like this through the loop and make the knot. And I will continue making these knots until there is no more cord here. And now that I can no longer make knots because the cord is too short, I will just cut the cord. Like this. And to prevent these knots from opening, I will just take some glue and apply it on these two ends, like this. And now, I have now I have finished the anklet, the cowrie shell surf anglet and as you can see the only tool that I needed for this anklet was a pair of scissors and um, to make the anklet I only needed the shell and a bit of cord I will show you how to make <coughs> an anklet using a metal link I will use this link in the shape of a feather and um, in order to make the anklet, I will also use some black cord, nylon cord, a lobster claw clasp to close and open the um, anklet, some jump rings, these two fold over connectors, will be used for the end of the cords and also some crimps these crimps as tools I will use some scissors a lighter for the cords and also a pair of pliers, chain nose pliers and a jump ring opener for the metal parts. Now let's begin by measuring the length of our cords. So as you can see I have two nylon cords and they have a length of about nine inches. So um, I will put about nine inches of cord and nine inches would be about 23 centimeters. So I will use two pieces of nylon cord that have around 9 inches, that is 23 centimeters. The first step will be to take the ornament, the connector, and I will put the 
nylon cord through the connector. The connector will be in the middle of our uh, anklet, like this. Now I have folded the nylon cord this way and I will take one of those crimps and put the nylon cord through the crimp. Like this, so I will put the nylon cords, both nylon cords, through the crimp like this. I'll find the middle of the cords this way, and I will and as you can see. Uh, I have pushed the crimp, let's see from a closer distance, and now as you can see the crimp is next to our connector, to the ornament of our uh, anklet. Now I will take the pliers and push on this crimp so that it presses on my cords this way like this and as you can see the cords no longer move Now I will take the second nylon cord Now I will take the second nylon cord Again I will put it through the connector This way Now I will take the second crimp And put the cords through this crimp this way. Again I will try to find the middle of the cord like this and again my crimp is next to the connector here. So I will not push it very close to the ring here because it might break the ring if I press too hard on the crimp and it might press on this ring. So I will grab the crimp so I have a bit of space between the crimp and the ring of the connector and I will press on the crimp like this so that my cords no longer move. So as you can see next to my um, connector to my feather connector, to the decoration of my anklet, I have two crimps that block the cord so that the cord doesn't move. So this will be the middle, the central part of my anklet. Now I will take the end of my cords this way. I will take one of those fold over connectors and I will put the my cords on the fold over connector like this. I will take the pliers and press I will press with the pliers on the fold over connector so that it presses on my cords. On this side as well. In this way. And 
And now uh, my fold over connectors press on the cord like this. Let's also do this on the other side. Again, I will take the fold over connector. I'll put the fold over connector on the cords and I will press on the fold over connector like this this way and now at both ends of my anklet I have these fold over connectors now at on these connectors I will put some jump rings. So I will take one of those jump rings. I will grab the jump ring with the pliers. I will take the jump ring opener and open the jump ring. I will put the jump ring through the connector like this. Now I will take the lobster claw clasp, put it on the jump ring. I will grab the jump ring and close. Like this. And now I have put the lobster claw clasp on one of the ends of my anklet and I will take the second jump ring grab it open it with the jump ring opener like this and I will put it like this on my fold over connector on the end of my anklet and close like this. and now I will close the anklet like this and let's see what the anklet looks like the finished anklet looks like. So as you can see this is my finished anklet. So this is the finished anklet. This will be the ornament, the connector of the anklet. And this is the closure of my anklet. I will show you how to create an anklet using a cowrie shell and some cord. As you can see I have a shorter bit of cord which I will use for the sliding knot. This one is about 20 15 to 20 centimeters long and I have another two cords that are a bit longer and they are for the anklet itself and these two cords are about 25 centimeters long. Um, in order to make this uh, surf anklet um, I will take these two cords. First of all I will superpose the cords and make 
a knot at the end of these cords. Like this. So I have made a knot here and now I will mark the middle of the uh, anklet and I will make another knot at about this distance here. Like this. So I have made two knots, one at the end and one about in about the middle of the cord. And now I will put the shell in between these two cords like this. Let's see from a closer distance. So exactly next to this knot, to prevent the shell from moving left to right, I put the shell and as you can see one of the cords is below the shell on this side of the shell and the other cord is in the ridge of this shell on the other opposite side of the shell. And now I will make these two cords cross inside of this shell so that the shell does not fall off. So I am going to take one of the cords. and put the cord through the shell like this. So the shell that was on the cord here, above the cord, will go through the shell and come out on the other side, through this hole. And I have the other cord that was on the lower part of the shell here, and I will put this cord that was on this side here, through the shell and make it come out on the upper side of the shell. So let's put the cord like this and take it out on the upper side of the shell. And now what do we have here? As you can see the two shells have crossed here inside of the shell. And now let's pull on the two threads, as you can see, the two cords are crossing inside here, inside the shell, so that the shell doesn't fall out. And to prevent the shell from sliding in this direction here, because it could move like this, you see, and to make it, to stop it from moving in this direction, we shall make another knot here. So in order to make a knot, I will take one of the cords, put it over the other cord and take it out here, on this side here. And now I will put the cord through the loop that I have created. And I am creating the sliding the knot that I wanted to create. Like this. And now as you can see I have created a knot on this side and I've also made a knot on this other side. So our shell is flanked by two knots. This way it cannot move left and right on the cord. And now, after I have created one knot here at the end, two knots to flank the shell, I will also make a knot, a fourth knot, here at the end of our cord.
like this. So we have a knot at both cord ends and now let's create the sliding knot so that we can put the anklet on the ankle and take it off. So I will put the cords like this, one over the other, as you can see here, and I will take the shorter bit of cord that I was planning to use for the sliding knot, I fold it like this, and I find the middle of the cord. And like this I have put the cord with the middle point under these two cords and I will make a simple overhand knot. So I cross the cords like this, take the cord out through here and make the first knot like this. And now I will create loops. I will create loops once on the right side, then on the left side, then on the right side, then on the left side and with by means of these loops I will create the knots of our sliding knot. So let's see how we make this sliding knot. I create the first loop on the right side. The thread on the, the cord on the left side will be put over the cord that came from the right side and underneath these two cords, like this. And now I will take the cord out through this loop here. And I will close the knot like this. Now I will make a loop on this other side, put the cord over this cord, take it under the two cords and out through the loop like this. And I make the second knot. So as you can see I already made two knots. Again I make a loop on the right side, put the cord from the left side over the first cord and take it out underneath these two cords like this and take it out through the loop. And again I will make a loop on the left side, bring the cord from the right side over the first cord, under the two cords here, like this, and take it out through this loop. And now I will tighten the knot and I've made another knot like this. And I will continue making knots until there is no more cord here. Like this and these two cords are now too short to uh, be able to make a new knot so I will cut the cord like this and to prevent it from um, opening, to prevent the knot from opening, I will simply take some glue and stick the two knots here. And now Now as you can see our anklet is ready. So as you can see here we only needed one shell and some cord. And to make the anklet I crossed the two cords inside of the shell so that it doesn't fall out and I made a knot at each end of the shell so that the shell doesn't move 
uh, to the left or to the right on our cord. At the end of our uh, anklet I made a knot and I also created a sliding knot so that we can close and open our anklet. And the only tool that we needed to make this uh, jewelry item was a pair of scissors. So if you are a beginner and you want to uh, learn how to make handmade jewelry, you can begin with a simple um, anklet like this, where you only need a pair of scissors. I will show you how to make a leather bracelet using black leather and a black nylon cord. As I will also use this metal charm and uh, as tools I will use a lighter and a pair of scissors and also some clamps. Now let's begin by... Um, first of all I will put some of those cords away and I will begin by preparing the first cord. First of all, I will make this end of the cord a bit pointed, like this, so that I can put it through the uh, charm. Like this. So I have put the black cord through the charm this way, through the link. Now I will take one of those cords and create a knot over here. So I will take one part of the cord, let's put the tools away so that we see clearly. So I'll, I have these two cords. I will take this cord and put it over the other one like this and now take it through this orifice here, through this loop. This way. And I have created the first knot on this side of the charm. Now at this end of the charm I will make um, knots, an overhand knot, this way, and I will take the scissors and cut the end of this knot this way and I will burn the end of the knot this way I'll take the cord and put it through the link this way and I will create a knot like this this way I have made a knot on the other side as well
Now let's create an overhand knot at this end as well. this way and now I have made another knot at the end of the cord here And uh, I've burned the end of this knot as well. Like this. And now, let's take the leather cord and put the charm on this cord. Let's find the middle of the Oh, sorry, the leather bracelet. Let's find the middle of the leather bracelet. So here is the middle. Let's put the middle like this. And I'll take the clamp and uh, fix the cord on the middle. Like this. And now let's take one of those strings. And uh, tie the... Um, charm to the leather bracelet. Now let's make this loop and take the string through the loop, out through the loop, this way. Now let's tighten these two strings. And now I will burn this end of the string. And let's cut this other end of the string and also burn it. This way. So this uh, connected to the leather bracelet. Now let's connect this other side. But first of all, let's connect the leather bracelet on this end. So 
I'll take the cord and put it on the leather bracelet like this. And now I will start twisting the cord around the leather bracelet like this. and take it out through this loop here like this let's cut a bit of the cord and burn the end of the cord and let's connect the I'll grab the cord and the leather bracelet with the clamp and now I will start twisting the cord, the waxed cord around the leather bracelet. Let's cut the cord now here on this side and burn it. And let's cut the other cord as well and also burn it. This way. And now uh, I only have to attach the last. end of the cord so I take the cord, the string put it on the bracelet and start twisting 
around the leather bracelet. And now let's burn this end of the cord. And I'll cut the, the end of this cord. And burn this end of the cord. Like this. And uh, so far, the bracelet is uh, ready. We only have to do the sliding knot. In order to make this sliding knot, I will uh, superpose the uh, nylon cord, the black wax nylon cord, like this. Grab it with the clamps to keep it in place. This way. And I will take this nylon cord to create the sliding knot. I will find the middle of this, um, this uh, waxed cord and at the middle of the waxed cord I will make a simple overhand knot like this. So you can see a simple knot first and then I start making a loop on this side I take the other cord, put it over the loop like this and take it out through the first loop, this way. And I created the first knot. Now I make another loop, put this cord over the first cord and take it out through the loop and tighten this second knot. Again I make another loop and Tighten this knot on this side. Another loop. Now I make another loop on this side. Let's see if another loop is possible. I think the cord is way too short so I cannot make another loop therefore I will cut the cords the ends of the cord 
and use the lighter to burn them. Let's cut these ends and let's burn the other end of the loop. In this way. And now let's remove the clamps and the bracelet is ready. This way. So this is the finished bracelet. Let's see what it looks like. Let's tighten a knot like this. So this is the finished bracelet, leather bracelet, with sliding knot. So this is what it looks like, with leather and wax cord, and the metal charm. Show you how to make a bracelet, a leather bracelet using braided leather, a soccer ball, metal soccer ball bead, and as findings I will use a lobster claw clasp, some jump rings, these clasp, as clasps at the end of the cord, of the braided leather cord, and as tools I will use the jump ring open and I will also use the, um, a pair of um, chain of pliers. Let's begin uh, by taking the braided leather cord and putting the bead, the soccer ball bead, metal bead, on the braided leather cord. like this and then find the middle of the leather cord and put the ornament exactly in the middle and now I will take one of those clamps and put the clamp on the end of the let's look from a closer distance I'll put the clamp so I'll take this um, leather cord and put the clamp on the end of the leather cord and close the clamp like this to make sure that it does not open this way. Like this. So I've pressed on the uh, end of this um, clamp like this and again at this other end I will take the clamp and press on the clamp to close it like this. like this. So it does not open. So the two ends are finished. So let's take the jump ring. I'll grab the jump ring with the uh, chain nose pliers like this and I'll open it with the 
jumpering opener this way. I'll put the jumpering through on the one hand, I'll put it through the lobster claw clasp. And on the other hand, I'll put the jump ring through this end of the cord, like this. I'll grab it. And close. So now I've closed this end here, like this. So I put the uh, clasp on the... Um, bracelet on this end and now I will take the other jump ring open and put it on this uh, end of the bracelet like this And close. Like this. And now let's close the a bracelet and let's see what it looks like. So this is what the bracelet looks like. So it's a soccer ball bracelet, like this. And as you can see, it's not very difficult to make this type of bracelet. It's a leather bracelet with a metal ornament in the shape of a soccer ball. And it matches uh, any type of clothing. As long as you do not combine it with um, other items of jewelry that are, for example, made of uh, gold. So it shouldn't be silver should not be combined with gold otherwise it goes with any color on your clothing Rambala bracelet using soccer ball beads so these beads look, look like a soccer ball and some black cord, nylon cord some clamps a pair of scissors, a lighter so let's uh, put the tools and the string away and I will begin by um, fastening the cord with the clamp. I will start putting the beads on the uh, main cord string, on this nylon string. like this and I will fasten the cord at this other end and now I will take another piece of uh, nylon string and I'll try to find the center of the nylon string so let's see I will put it like this in two and find where the center is so this is the center part uh, I will make an overhand knot, a simple knot like this. So I made the first knot and now I'll put those tools away so that I do not get bothered by those tools. So I will make the first loop. I will take this string and put it over this string here. 
I'll take the other string, I'll put it like this, over this string, and then I'll bring it under these two strings and take it out through the loop here. Like this. And like this I made the first knot. Let's see from a closer distance what the knot looks like. So this is the first knot. Now I will take the string and make again a loop, as you can see here, and bring this other string over this side and take it out through the loop here, like this. And close the second one. So let's see from a distance so that you can understand how the knots are made. So let's make the third knot. the same way. I bring the string through this loop. And now I will add the first bead. So I'll put the uh, string around the bead, the other string. I will bring it through the loop over here. Like this. And I have, as you can see, made the loop. So I put, let's make the not again. So I bring the bead here and I make as usual the loop like this, this way, and I bring the other string over the loop and through the loop here, out here, over the string and through the loop here. Like this. And then I make the next knot. And I continue making the knots just like before.
and again I make a knot I put the string like this and the other one I'll bring it over this string and take it through the loop here another bead so I tighten the knot around this bead See what it looks like at the moment. So I'll cut the 
ends here. And I'll burn this end here. I'll burn the ends of this string here. And I'll put these metal beads at the end of the string, like this. So I'll put the first metal bead this way. So I made the end of the <coughs> nylon cord pointed and I put the bead. And I'll make a knot at the end of this cord. And make the knot at the end of this cord like this. And uh, now I will burn the cord end. And I'll put the bead, the metal bead, at the end of the cord. This way. And now let's do the same thing with the other. Let's put the other beads away. I'll put the second bead. I'll burn the end of the cord. and make it pointed like this. And now I can add the bead this way, like this, and I can make the knot here at the end of the cord. Like this, and now all I have to do is burn the end of this cord. this and I uh, also added the second bead so both ends have this bead metal bead here now the next step will be I will put all these uh, tools away and uh, I will make the sliding knot for the bracelet in order to make this sliding knot, I will take one of those clamps and grab the these two uh, ends, and I'll take another clamp and put it here, so that the cord does not move. I have this uh, cord here and now I will take this cord and make the sliding knot. I will make the first knot here. I'll find the middle of the cord Uh, so I made the first knot here. And um, let's move the knot upward. And I'll make the first loop like this.
make a few more loops. I'll make the last loop now. And now I will cut the cord. I'll remove the clamp. So the bracelet is now ready. Let's see what it looks like. So this is the finished bracelet with football, with soccer balls. I will show you how to make a beaded bracelet for men using beads of different colors. I will use black wooden beads and wooden beads in the natural color of wood. I will also use a metal bead. And of course, I will need some black nylon thread. Besides the beads, 
I will need some findings. And let's look at the findings from a closer distance. I will use some jump rings, a lobster claw clasp to open and to close the bracelet, and for the end of the thread, some bead ends. And I will also need some crimps. And as tools, I will need a jump ring opener and a um, pair of chain nose pliers. And for the nylon thread, I will need some scissors. For the end of the thread, a lighter and a big eye beading needle. Now I will put the tools away and I will begin. And I will put the findings away too. And I will begin with the with the thread. As you can see, I measured the thread so that it is a bit longer than the circumference of my wrist. And now I will begin by making a knot at the end of the thread. Now I will take the big eye beading needle I will take one crimp I will take this crimp and I will put it on the needle this way and at the end of the thread I will take the pliers and press on the crimp. And now I will take the lighter and burn the end of the thread. Now I will take a bead end and put the bead end on this thread like this. And now that the thread doesn't come out anymore because I have also put the crimp, I will close the bead this way
and I will take two more findings. I will take a jump ring and the lobster claw clasp. I will grab the jump ring with the pliers and the jump ring opener and I will open the jump ring. I will put the lobster claw clasp on the jump ring and I will also put the bead end on this jump ring like this. And now I will close the jump ring. And now I have created the end of the bracelet. After I have created the end of the bracelet, I will start to add the beads. I have the beads here and I will start putting the beads on the bracelet. I'll put different colors of beads. Now that I've reached the center of the bracelet, I will add the metal bead. And I will continue adding beads in a symmetrical manner. the last three beads
And now I have uh, finished adding the beads to the bracelet and uh, I will close the make the end of the uh, bracelet now. So I will put the bead end. So I have put the bead end here, like this. I will put a crimp I will make sure that the um, beads have a bit of space in between so that they are not very compressed and I will close the crimp like this I will take the needle out and now I have pressed on the crimp like this and now I will make a knot over here so that the crimp does not come out And now that I have made a knot here, I will take the scissors and cut the thread. So I have cut the end of the thread and I will take the lighter and burn this end of the thread like this. And now I will close the bead end. like this and here I will put the last finding the jump ring that I will open using the pliers and the jump ring opener and I will put the jump ring through the bead end like this and now both ends of the bracelet are ready and let's see if the bracelet can be opened and closed like this. So I have closed the bracelet using the clasp. And now let's see what the finished bracelet looks like. So this is the finished bracelet for men. show you how to make a bracelet using nylon cord beads in different colors and as tools I will use a lighter and a pair of scissors 
Let's start making them. A bracelet by first making a knot at the end of the nylon cord. Let's burn the end of the nylon cord. And at the other end of the nylon cord, let's put um, let's make the end pointed. by burning the end and I would, now this end is pointed like this so that I can put the beads I will begin by putting a bead at the end Like this, and now let's put some black beads. some more beads like this now I will put a purple bead like this another black bead purple beads this one I'll put a blue bead, another purple bead, some blue beads now let's put some light blue beads this turquoise turquoise light turquoise bead now let's put a white bead and add a turquoise bead some more white bead
let's put some more white beads. I'll put another turquoise bead. A white bead. Some more turquoise beads. Now some blue beads. Bead. Another blue bead. Some purple beads. I'll put a black bead. Another purple bead. Some more black beads. And now let's put the blue bead and I will make a knot. At the end of the curl. And now I will burn the end of the cord. And I'll look for the middle of this bracelet, like this, and the point where the middle of the bracelet is, I will mark it like this, and I will make a knot.
cut like this. So I've made knots at the end of the bracelet so that the beads do not move. And now I will superpose these two bracelet ends. I will take the nylon cord, fold it like this in two, find the middle and I will put the nylon cord underneath these two cords like this and now I will make a simple overhand knot like this let's look from a closer distance how I make the overhand knot I will first of all make a loop like this and I will take the second part of the cord and put it first of all over this loop. Then I will put it underneath this cord and I will take it out underneath the second cord here, the one with the bead, and I will take it out through this loop. And now I have made a knot like this. I will tighten this knot and I created the first knot of the, uh, of the sliding knot. I'll do the same on the other side. I'll create the loop and put this uh, end of the cord like this and take it out of the loop. And I've made the second knot. Let's make another knot like this, and then make another knot, Let's make a few more notes. just one more knot because there is no more cord like this so this is the last knot I will tighten this knot so that it does not open I will take the scissors and cut 
Then what? Like this. And now I will take the lighter and burn. This end of the knot. And uh, now let's burn this other end of the cord. Like this. And now let's see if the sliding knot is moving. Like this. And this is the finished bracelet with the sliding knot. will show you how to make a bracelet using nylon cord and some beads. I will use black wooden beads and also turquoise beads. I will need a few tools. First of all, I will need a measuring tape. For the small parts, I can use, if I cannot grab the beads with my fingers, I can use some pincers. And for the cord, for the nylon cord, I will need a pair of scissors and a lighter. So I will need two bits of cord. Um, as you can see, I will cut a bit of cord which is longer than the distance around my wrist so there should be a bit of extra cord here so that I can open and close the bracelet with the sliding knot so this cord the first cord is about 14 inches long 14 inches is about 37 38 centimeters long the second bit of nylon cord is a shorter cord that I will use in order to make the sliding knot. So this shorter uh, bit of nylon cord will be about 5 inches long, that is about 13 centimeters long. So this nylon cord will be used for the sliding knot and this one will be used to put the beads on. And now let's start making the bracelet. I will take the uh, nylon cord, the longer nylon cord for the beads and make begin by making a knot at the end of my cord. This way. So I have tightened this knot and this knot here at the end of my cord um, in order to prevent it from opening, I will burn it with my lighter like this and this way it will not open anymore. Now I will take the other end of my cord and I will also burn it to make it pointy like this. If it is pointy this way, it will go through my beads. I will take one of those turquoise beads and put the bead at the end of my cord this way. And now I will start putting my beads on the uh, on the bracelet. So I will alternate turquoise beads and uh, black wooden beads. I will continue putting those beads. So a black bead and a turquoise bead and I will continue putting those beads until I obtain the desired length of my bracelet. And now that I have finished 
adding the beads I will put another bead at the end a uh, turquoise bead at the end of my string and I will make a knot like this so I will tighten this knot this way I will take the lighter and burn the end of my knot melt it so that the knot doesn't open anymore and now I have the ends of the bracelet ornated with some turquoise beads and I will put the other beads in the middle of my bracelet this way I will grab the nylon cord at this point here and I will make a knot to mark the point where the beads will stop and I will also make another knot at the end of these beads here this way as you can see I have a knot and at the end of my bracelet beads here and here so that the beads no longer move to the left and to the right now I will put the beads away the turquoise beads and I will create the sliding knot so let's see from a closer distance how to create a sliding knot uh, first of all I will superpose the ends of my bracelet like this and I will take the short nylon cord I will superpose the ends of my nylon cord so that I find the middle of my nylon cord I will put the nylon cord underneath the other two cords and I will make a simple overhand knot like this so I have created a simple knot here and now I will start making the sliding knot I will take one of those ends of my sliding knot put it over the two cords here then I will take the other uh, cord I will put it over the first cord here and then I will put it underneath these two cords here like this and now I will take it out through this loop this way and I will close the first knot of my sliding knot so the first loop was on the left side and now I will put the loop on the right side. I will take the other cord, put it over this cord, put it under the, these two cords like this and take it out through this loop here. this way and I will close the second knot and again I will make a loop on the left side so the loops will be made once on the right and once on the left side I create the loop I put this other cord over it and take it out through this loop here again I will make the loop on the right side and now 
As you can see, uh, the cord is too short, so I will take the scissors. First of all, I will tighten this last knot. I will take the scissors and cut. And I will burn with the lighter. Now I will turn the knot, the sliding knot. I will also cut this bit of cord. And I will burn the end of the cord. And let's see if the sliding knot is moving. So as you can see, it's moving. So let's close the bracelet like this. And as you can see, this is the finished bracelet. Let's see what the bracelet looks like on the wrist. So this is the finished bracelet. This is the sliding knot here. And the bracelet. With turquoise beads and uh, black wooden beads. I will show you how to make a simple bracelet using curry shells. Um, and uh, you will also use some wooden beads like this some string and as tools I will use a pair of scissors. So as you can see the only tools that I will use in order to make this bracelet will be the pair of scissors. Otherwise I will use no accessories, no um, findings, no metal uh, items, just string and the beads, the wooden beads and the shells. So, I will take the string and I will find the middle of the string, like this. This way. And here, at the middle point, I will take one of those wooden beads and put the bead On this string. I will make a knot, an overhand knot, a simple overhand knot here at the end of this cord. This way. Like this. And now I will measure my wrist and establish how long this cord should be. So I have decided that the cord should be about this long and this is why I will make an overhand knot at this point here. This way. And now I will start adding the cowrie shells in order to create the bracelet. This way I will put the first shell. Now let's see from a closer distance. This is the first um, shell that I will add. So I will put the shell in between those two strings like this. And I will take the string from below and put it through the shell like this and I will take the string from above and also put it through the shell this way like this so as you can see the string that came from below came out here on the upper side of the shell and the string that came from the upper side was taken out here on the lower part of the shell and in the middle the two strings cross each other and now I will make a knot so I will take this string and I'll put it over the second string and take the string this way underneath the other string and I have created this loop 
and on this side of the loop I will put the I'll take the string out in order to create this knot here. So I'll put this knot as close as possible to the shell so that the shell is fixed between these two knots like this. Now let's take the second shell and now I will do the same, so I'll put the shell in between those two strings and I will take the string from below and take it out through the shell like this and take the string from above and put it through the shell and take it out on the lower part like this. So again I have the two strings crossed in the middle of the shell and I make again a knot. So I have this string here that I let, I put it on the table straight like this and the second string, this one, will be put over the first string and now I will take it underneath these two strings like this in order to create this loop. this way and now that I have created this loop I will take the string out through the loop like this and I will tighten this knot so that the shell does not move this way so I already have two shells like this And I will continue adding the next shells by using the same technique. And now this is the last bead, so let's see from a closer distance. Again, I put one string on top and one string on the lower side of the shell. And now I take the uh, string from the bottom of the shell and put it through the shell and take it out on top of the shell. And I will take the string from above the shell and take it out through the bottom of the shell. And now here, instead of making um, the smaller knot I will make a simple overhand knot because this is the end of the bracelet I will make sure that the shell is fixed between these two knots. And now I will measure these two ends of the bracelet so that they are equal. And I will take 
the second wooden bead and put it on this second string of the bracelet. This way. So again, I will measure the length of this bracelet and make the knot, the simple overhand knot, at the end of the bracelet here. So that the two ends are equal. Like, like this. So now I made sure that the two ends of the bracelet are equal and now I can simply cut the end of the cord here like this and now as you can see the bracelet is almost finished so as you can see the shells go around the wrist and I have these two strings here now before we continue I will just measure the length of the bracelet so as you can see for a woman's wrist a bracelet is around six inches long or 16 centimeters 15 to 16 almost 16 centimeters and in order to make a bracelet for men you can add one more inch or one inch and a half so you can make it 18 19 or 20 centimeters long depending on the wrist um, of a man and um, the entire bracelet is about 13 inches long that is 33 centimeters long because we also need this bit of a string in order to be able to take the bracelet out from our wrist and now let's finish the bracelet by creating a sliding knot so I will take a bit of cord like this and put it underneath so let's put it this way so I'll put these two ends of the cord like this I'll superpose them and I will take this bit of a cord and find the middle of the cord like this so as you can see I found the middle of the cord and I will make a simple overhand knot here on the cord like this so I made the first knot and now let's see from a closer distance how I will make the uh, knot the sliding knot so I will make a loop here, like this, and I will take the other cord and put it through this loop that I have created here. And I'll put this other string here. And I've created the first loop the first knot on the sliding knot. Now I make another loop like this. I take this second string, I put it over the first 
string and take it out underneath the two strings and take it out through this loop. And I made the second knot of the sliding knot. And again I will do the loop on this side, take the second string, put it over the first string like this and underneath the two strings and take it out on this side. Again, I make the knot on this side, like this. Take this other string, put it over the first string, take it underneath these strings and take it out through the loop here. Again, I make the knot on this side, take the string over the first string like this and take it out underneath the two strings and out through the loop. And I'll make a few more knots this way. And now that I have made these knots here, I will simply cut it. And now that I have finished the sliding knot, I will just take the scissors and cut the ends of the cord this way. And now that I have cut the ends of the cord, the bracelet is finished. So as you can see I have used seven uh, shells and I was looking for shells that should look um, as similar as possible as size. I used the string, the black cord, and some wooden beads. So as you can see, the only tool I needed for this type of bracelet was the pair of scissors. So let's see what it looks like if I put it on my arm. So this is what the bracelet looks like on the arm. So this is what the finished bracelet looks like. And as you can see, it is not very difficult to make such a bracelet by using these shells and a bit of string. I will show you how to create an upper arm bracelet or an armband uh, using some cowrie shells. Um, I will also use some cord. And um, as you can see here, I have several bits of cord. 
um, I have um, a cord that is about 70 centimeters long and another uh, longer cord which has about 140 centimeters and I will use these cords in order to create the braiding of the um, biceps bracelet. At the moment I will um, start creating the uh, armband using this cord. So at the beginning of this cord I will take the cords that I have and I will make a knot like this and I will grab this end of the cord with a clamp like this and now I have these three cords which are equal uh, as length and I will start creating the uh, braiding for our armband so I will start braiding this cord Like this so as you can see it's a simple braiding and I will continue braiding until the point where I will apply the first um, cowrie shell So now I will use this as a clamp and I will grab two of the cords in order to put them away so that I can work with the cord that I need in order to create the jewelry item that I want. I will attach the first curry shell. So I have this cord here. I will put the cord through the shell and I will make a knot so that the curry shell will uh, be attached to our braiding. So I will take this cord and put it over the other cord like this in order to form a loop here. So as you can see here I have a loop. I will take the cord and put it through this loop to make the knot. like this and I have attached the first cord, the first cowrie shell to our braided cord and now let's continue braiding
and now I will stop again I will grab the two quarts and take another cowrie shell I will take the second cowrie shell and take the cord put it through the shell like this and create a loop this way I'll put the cord through the loop and tighten this knot and as you can see I have now added the second cowrie shell I'll just remove this clamp and continue braiding as I have braided so far so I will braid a similar length of cord so as you can see I'm trying to uh, braid the cords um, so that um, the braiding looks even And again, I will grab the two cords like this, and I will take another bead and I will put the cord through the bead, create the loop like this and tighten the knot this way like this let's continue braiding and adding the, the rest of our cowrie shells so I will continue braiding using the same steps until I have added all the cowrie shells now I have uh, finished making the um, biceps bracelet I will take the cords and put the cords through this bead over here So I put the cords, the braid, the cords that I was braiding through this bead here. And now I will be making a knot. Like this so that the bead stops in this knot 
And now I will tighten both knots so that they do not open. So as you can see I have this cord here that has to be removed so I will cut it. And by means of a lighter I will melt the end of the cord so that it sticks to the knot and doesn't open. And here I have these cord ends that I will cut like this and I will put away these cords and now I will close the upper arm bracelet like this. So this is the finished upper arm bracelet. As you can see it is made of a braided cord and it uses these cowrie shells as ornaments and for uh, the closure I have used a simple wooden bead. And as um, tools, I needed just a few tools. I needed a lighter, I needed a pair of scissors and a clamp to grab the cord in order to be able to braid it. So this is the finished upper arm bracelet. show you how to make a pair of earrings using Murano glass, Millefiori Murano glass, some opal beads, metal beads and some um, chain uh, and findings, some eye pins, jump rings, and uh, French ear wires. Um, let's uh, start by taking one of those jump rings and uh, I will open this jump ring by using a pair of um, chain nose pliers I'll grab the jump ring and I will um, also grab the jump ring with the jump ring opener and open it like this. And now I will take the chain and put the chain on the jump ring. this way and the second, the shorter chain uh, this way. So I put the two chains on the jump ring and now I will take one of those pins eye pins and put it also on a jump ring this way and now I'll grab the jump ring with the pliers and with the jump ring opener and close it like this so I have attached the uh, chain to the eye pin. Now let's straighten the eye pin like this and I will take the second eye pin and straighten it. This way. And I will take the next jump ring 
grab it with the pliers and with the jump ring opener open it and I will put the chain like this and I will put the second chain on the jump ring and now I will also take the eye pin and put it on the jump ring like this so the second uh, eye pin had this ring attached with the chain and now let's start making the earring by putting the beads. I will first put the Murano bead, the Millefiori bead, then I'll put the metal bead and then I will put the opal bead, the semi precious stone, this way. Now I will measure the end of the pin to see if it is necessary to cut with the cutting pliers but it looks like the pin is long enough and now I will create the loop first of all I will bend this pin to 90 degrees and because this opal bead is very um, easy to break um, I will leave one millimeter between the last bead and the place where I bend the pin so that the pin doesn't the bead doesn't break now I will bend the be uh, pin like this with the chain nose pliers now I grab the round nose pliers and create the loop Before I close this loop, I put the fish hook ear wire on the loop like this and now I can close this loop. Like this. And the first earring is ready. Now let's take the second pin. I'll put the glass bead, the Millefiori bead, the metal bead, and the semi precious stone, the opal bead. Again, let's measure. The pin is long enough, and now I will take. the pliers and bend the pin to 90 degrees take the round nose pliers to create the loop put the fish hook ear wire and close the loop like this so the two earrings are ready now So these are the finished earrings, glass earrings, with the Venetian glass. Let's make a pair of uh, earrings, metal earrings with crosses. I will use a pair of pliers, chain nose pliers and a jump ring opener 
As findings, I will use some jump rings, fishhook ear wires, and some pieces of chain, and the metal crosses. First of all, I will grab the jump ring with the chinos pliers and open it with the jump ring opener, like this, perhaps a bit more so that I can put the chain, like this. So now I have opened the jump ring and I will put the fishhook ear wire and also the chain, like this. And now I will grab the jump ring again and close it like this and make sure that it doesn't the chain doesn't come out that is perfectly closed and now I will take another jump ring grab it and with the, the jump ring opener I will open the jump ring like this and again I will put the cross on the jump ring like this and the chain like this and now I will grab the jump ring with the pliers and with the jump ring opener I will close the jump ring this way and <coughs> the first earring is ready. So as you can see I have used uh, the um, fishhook ear wire, a jump ring here, the chain, and the second jump ring here, and the cross. Now let's make the second earring. Again, I will grab the jump ring, open it with the jump ring opener, like this. Put the fishhook ear wire and the chain like this, and now I will grab the jump ring and close it with the jump ring opener. Make sure the ring is flat and now this part of the earring is ready. Now I will take the second jump ring, grab it, open it, like this, put the earring, the cross, on the jump ring like this and I will also put the chain like this. Now I grab the end of the jump ring and close it like this and I've finished the second earring as well. Like this. 
I will show you how to make a pair of earrings, of simple earrings, using some painted cowrie shells. As you can see, they are broken on this side so that, that they can be used as beads. Um, I will also use a pair of pliers, the chain nose pliers, which have the top pointed so that they can grab small parts, small um, findings like this. Um, another tool that I am going to use is the jump ring opener. And I will also need some findings, the fish hook ear wires that we use to hang the earrings in the ears and the jump rings. Now let's take one of those beads and make the first earring. So I will take the bead and I will take one jump ring and open the jump ring with the jump ring opener and the pliers. I will put the bead on this jump ring and I will also put the fish hook ear wire on the jump ring. I'll grab the jump ring with the pliers and with the jump ring opener I will op uh, close the jump ring and I have created the first earring. So this is a very colorful earring so it can be worn for example at the beach. And now let's do the same with the second earring. I will grab the pliers and I'll grab the jump ring and with the jump ring opener I'll open the jump ring. I'll put the um, shell on the jump ring and now I will put the fish hook ear wire on the jump ring but before I put the fish hook ear wire I will see how I put the other fish hook ear wire. So if this fish hook ear wire has the top oriented in this direction the second fish hook ear wire should have the top here oriented in the opposite direction so that when I put the earrings on my ears they both face with the painted side towards the front. For example if I put the ear wire in the same direction this way let's see what will happen. I will put the second earring on my ear and the earring will show the back of the shell not the front of the shell. This is why I will put the fish hook ear wire in this direction and then they will both show the colorful part. So I will grab the jump ring with the pliers and the jump ring opener and close the jump ring. And now I have also made the second earring. Like this we have both earrings ready now. So as you can see for a pair of earrings like this we only need two simple tools and two findings. And uh, we have made a pair of colorful earrings that you can wear for example at the beach. Pair of earrings uh, using cowrie shells. As you can see I have chosen cowrie shells that are painted also beside the white ones and I will show you how to make a pair of earrings for which you only need two tools and also two findings. Before we begin let's talk about the tools and the findings. 
So for this pair of earrings, we shall use these two tools. And let's talk about each one of them. This ring is called the jump ring opener and as the name suggests, it is used for opening and closing the jump rings. So these are the jump rings. Um, the second tool that we shall need for this type of uh, earrings uh, are these uh, pliers, which are called the chain nose pliers. As you can see, they are pointed here, they are very narrow, so that with this tip of the pliers we can grab the small items. Um, they are used for also for bending a wire, uh, they have multiple utilities, but in this case we shall also, uh, also use them for only one purpose, for opening and closing the jump rings together with the jump ring opener. Um, as you can see, um, characteristic of these pliers is the fact that they have no teeth on this surface. You can see the surface is very flat. The reason for not having teeth is the fact that this way the um, findings will not be scratched or will be scratched less. Um, the disadvantage of not having teeth is the fact that um, they um, do not grip so uh, well the findings. And uh, let's talk about the findings now. I've uh, shown you the jump rings, so these are the jump rings. And um, <clears throat> the jump rings are a very uh, common type of uh, uh, finding that is used for very many um, jewelry items. They are used for necklaces, for bracelets, for anklets, for very, very many types of uh, jewelry items. So generally when you um, make handmade jewelry, you should think about having uh, jump rings because a lot of jump rings because you will need them for most of your jewelry items. Um, as you can see, for these earrings, I have chosen some large uh, jump rings because of the shape of the uh, cowrie shells. As you can see, these cowrie shells. Have, do not have an orifice here so that you could um, attach a smaller jump ring. They are broken here, so this distance is pretty large, so we shall need a larger jump ring for them. And the second finding that we shall need um, is this item. This is called a French ear wire or a fish hook ear wire, and it is used for hanging the earring on your ear, on the earlobe. So we shall only need these two findings for our earrings. And now that I have talked to you about what we need as tools and findings in order to make the earrings, let's start making the earrings. So let's begin by taking the beads, putting them in order like this, and let's start attaching the beads to one another. I'll take a jump ring, I grab it with the pliers and using the jump ring opener I will open the jump ring. As you can see I have opened the jump ring uh, very much because the space of the jump ring, this space, should allow this large bit of shell to go through the jump ring like this. So I have attached the first bead and now I will attach the second bead. Like this. 
So I have attached the two beads and now we are going to close the jump ring. Again, I grab the jump ring with my pliers and with the jump ring opener I will close it. This way. Like this. So, the first two beads have been attached. Now let's attach the next bead, the next shell. I will take the second jump ring open it like this and I put it through the first bead and also through the last bead the second bead and through the third bead, the last bead and again I grab it with the pliers like this and close it with the jump ring opener like this and now that I have attached the beads to one another Let's attach the last item, the finding, the fish hook ear wire that, as I've told you, is used in order to hang the earring on the earlobe. I will again use a jump ring to attach the to attach the fish hook ear wire to the rest of the earring. I'll grab the jump ring with the pliers, open the jump ring, put the jump ring through the bead and attach the fish hook ear wire. Um, I will mention an important aspect that you should take into consideration. So this is the position of the beads and the front of the bead faces us, right? So, we shall take into consideration that when we make our earrings we should think about what direction those beads will face. If we want the beads to face this direction, then we must calculate how they will look on the uh, ear. So, we must calculate uh, what the face will look like. So let's say that this is the face. This is one ear and this is the other ear. So we have made the first earring and if we attach it to the ear we have to put this fish hook ear wire in this position, in this direction so that it faces the ear this way. If we put it this way um, then our earring will face this direction. If we put it this way, the earring, if we put it into the ear, will be looking like this, right? Because we take it, we, let's see, we put the earring like this, right? And if you want to hang it in this ear, we'll do this. So what will happen? The earring will face the opposite direction, so we'll see the back of the earring. So be very careful that you calculate how the earring should look in the end uh, and in what direction the front of the earring should uh, go and According to that, you will attach the fish hook ear wire. So I put the fish hook ear wire this way so that I can hang it in the ear like this. I will put the fish hook ear wire like this, and again, I will close the jump ring. 
with the jump ring opener and our first earring is ready. So this is our first earring. And on the background is our little friend who wants something. I think I'll go to see what the cat wants. Right kitty? Because you don't let us finish the earrings. So anyway, this is the first earring. As you can see, I have finished the first earring. And then, let's make the second earring. And here we have our little friend who wants attention because he's getting bored alone. And now that our little mascot has decided to leave us alone, let's continue to make the, the other earring, but quickly, because uh, the cat is getting bored when he is alone, and uh, he might decide to bother us again. Uh, now let's make the second earring and we shall use the same steps that we used for the first earring. So I'll take the jump ring, open it with the jump ring opener and the pliers. I'll open the jump ring a bit more so that the bead can go through the jump ring and I attach the two uh, beads at the bottom of the uh, earring. And now I close them. And now let's take the second earring. The second uh, jump ring, sorry. So I have the uh, second jump ring, I've opened it, I put the last bead, I close the jump ring. like this and I have attached the last earring the last uh, bead to the earring and now let's also attach the uh, fish hook ear wire again I open the jump ring with the jump ring opener like this I put the Uh, jump ring through the bead and as I have told you now if this earring faced the um, 
fish hook ear wire faced the tip of the fish hook ear wire faced this direction I will have to put this fish hook ear wire in this direction why because if we have the face here one of the jump rings uh, one of the uh, earrings will face this direction and the other one must look like this but it also has to show the front of the beads therefore this fish hook ear wire will go in the opposite direction so if you are not attentive at this detail you will um, finish the earrings and you will notice that one of the earrings uh, is reversed so you will have to open the jump ring and make the fishhook ear wire open the uh, face the other direction so that the earrings look normal so these are the two earrings um, as you can see they are dangle earrings and um, because I have used uh, these colors you can match them with something that with a, a clothing that has green or red and you can wear them for example at the beach uh, generally the dangle earrings uh, have an elegant look and they also because they are long they also make your neck look longer so as you can see it is not difficult to make a pair of uh, earrings like these the technique for making these earrings is relatively simple because we only need two tools and two types of um, findings the jump rings and the fish hook ear wires to hang the earrings on the ear I will show you how to create a pair of earrings a pair of animal print earrings using some cowrie shells as you can see these cowrie shells have been printed with animal print and uh, <clears throat> like all cowrie shells if we want to turn them into jewelry we need to break them on this side so these are the shells that I am going to use for these earrings Um, we shall also need some tools. I will need a pair of pliers, the chain nose pliers, that you can identify by the fact that they are narrow <clears throat> here at the top in order to grab the small findings. And another characteristic of the chain nose pliers is the fact that they have a flat surface without teeth on the inside to prevent them from scratching the findings of course the fact that they have no teeth will make them uh, grab less securely the um, <clears throat> findings but nevertheless they will protect the surface of the findings because they will scratch the surface less so you might risk to uh, lose the findings so they might fall off the pliers but on the other hand the pliers will not scratch because they have no teeth another tool that I will use is this ring which is called the jump ring opener so these two spaces here are made for the jump rings so a jump ring will fit into this space here as you can see and it can be opened and closed with the pliers like this and closed 
So these are the tools that I will use. And um, I will also use some findings. On the one hand, hand I will use the jump ring that I've been telling you about that I am going to open and close with this jump ring opener. And on the other uh, I will use these fish hook ear wires or French ear wires which are used to, in order to put the uh, to hang the earrings on the ear. The earrings that I will make will be uh, dangle earrings and you can wear them for example at the beach. Um, let's start making the earrings. First of all I will take one of the jump rings, I'll grab it with the pliers and with the jump ring opener I will open the jump ring. I will take one of those shells, put the shell on the jump ring and then I will put the fish hook ear wire. I will close the jump ring like this and I have made the first part of our earring. Of course if you like a shorter earring you can just leave the earring like this. If you want a dangle earring then we shall do the next thing. I'll take another jump ring. Again I'll open the jump ring. I will put the second shell on this jump ring like this and I have created the first so now I have created the first earring as you see so I have attached the two shells to one another so that I have created the dangle earring Now I'll take the remaining findings and I will do the same steps. So I'll take one of the shells, I'll grab the jump ring, I'll open the jump ring, I will put the first shell and then I will also put the second shell on this jump ring like this and now let's close this jump ring as well this way and I'll take the second jump ring, I'll open it I'll put the jump ring on the shell and now I will put the second fish hook ear wire but I will make sure that the tip of this fish hook ear wire faces the opposite direction than the other fish hook ear wire. So if this fish hook ear wire here points to the left side the second fish hook ear wire, this one, will point to the right so that both earrings will show us the front, the colorful part. So I'll put this fish hook ear wire here and I will close the jump ring. Like this, and now our animal print earrings are both ready. With some simple tools, just two simple tools, the pliers and the jump ring opener and a few findings, the jump rings and the fish hook ear wires. So this is what the earrings look like from a closer distance. I will show you how to make a pair of wedding earrings using pearls. 
I will use teardrop pearls and also spherical pearls, white pearls and um, I will also need some findings and some tools. Let's begin by talking about the tools that I will use. Um, I will first of all use this uh, type of uh, pliers. These pliers are called chain nose pliers. The chain nose pliers have this um, narrow end here, which is made for grabbing small parts. So, for example, this uh, jump ring is very small, so it is difficult to work with it if you do not have a pair of pliers that are very narrow towards the top so that they can grab the small part. And um, the pliers are also going to be used to bend the pins. I have two types of pins and I will tell you exactly what these pins are and what they are used for. Um, so this is a tool that um, you will use very often for your handmade jewelry, the chain nose pliers. And uh, as a uh, detail on this uh, pair of pliers, you will notice that the surface, the inside surface of the pliers is flat. So it has no teeth here. The purpose, um, the reason why this surface is flat is that um, if it doesn't have any teeth it will uh, not scratch the surface of the metal, of the findings that you use. Uh, and another detail that you have to take into consideration when you buy your tools is this uh, little uh, spring here. Um, with your um, uh, tools for your handmade jewelry you should also have a spring on your uh, pliers because the spring will open the tool after you have used it. So if I have, let's say, uh, bent the pin uh, I release the handles and the pliers uh, open on their own so that I can use them again. So it is very practical when you want to work faster and to work with only one hand. So this spring is also a detail that you should take into consideration when choosing your tools. Another type of pliers that we are going to use to make these earrings are these pliers. These are the cutting pliers. As the name implies, you are going to use them to cut your pins or any other metal parts that you want to cut. In uh, this case we are going to make earrings and we will have to cut the pins to the right uh, length. The next pair of pliers are these pliers. Um, these pliers are called round nose pliers because they have these rounded ends here. The round nose pliers are used to create loops on your pins. So you will simply wrap the wire around the pliers and create a loop. Uh, as you can see, these pliers also have a spring here, but this spring looks different. There are two metal sheets like this which meet here in the middle and they also have the role of opening your pliers if you have closed them. The um, finding that I will talk about is this uh, small nail. Um, as you can see it has this end that looks like this and um, this item is called um, an, uh, a head pin. It is called a head pin because of this a end that looks like a nail. So you will use it um, to put the beads on it. 
and then you can, can connect it to the rest of the uh, earring. Another uh, finding that you will use for your uh, beads is this uh, type of pin. This is an eye pin and it is called an eye pin because of this little loop that it has uh, on its end. It is made to connect one part of the earring to another part of the earring. So for example if you have a bead on this pin here and you want to make a dangle earring then you can put another bead like this on the eye pin and you will connect the eye pin with the head pin like this and make a pair of dangle earrings. So these two types of um, pins are used for the earrings and um, they, uh, they come in different sizes. You can find the shorter pins than these if you want to put just one bead or two small beads but there are also pins that are much longer than these uh, which are uh, designed either for larger um, beads or for uh, the use of many beads on one pin. Beside the pins you will also need this item for your earrings. This is called the fish hook ear wire or the French ear wire and it is used to for hanging the earring in the ear. And uh, now uh, that I've talked about uh, the tools and the findings that you will use for the earrings, let's start making the earrings. Let's put some of the findings and the tools away so that we have some space. And now I will take the first um, pearl, I will take the teardrop pearl and put the bead on it. And now let's measure the length of the pearl, of the um, a pin, sorry, and let's cut the pin. So I will cut the pin around here using the cutting pliers. So I will grab the uh, pin like this and I will cut it using the uh, cutting pliers. And now that I've cut the pin, I will bend the pin. So I will take the pin like this and bend it to 90 degrees using the chain nose pliers. So I have bent the pin this way. And now I will take the round nose pliers to make the loop. So I will grab the end of the pin with the round nose pliers like this and start creating the loop like this so I have not closed the loop yet I will put it away for the moment and now I will do the second part of the earring I will take a uh, an eye pin and put two of those spherical beads like this. And now I will also measure the length of this pin and I will cut the pin with the cutting pliers like this and I have cut another fragment of the pin which I'll put away and now I have this end of the pin and again I will take the chain of pliers 
grab the pin and bend the pin it should be in the same direction with the other uh, uh, loop otherwise it will look asymmetrical so I'll bend to 90 degrees the pin with the chain nose pliers and now I will take the round nose pliers grab the end of this pin and again start creating the loop so as you can see here the top of the pliers of the round nose pliers um, is smaller whereas the um, base of the pliers here is larger so if you want to make a smaller loop you will use the top of the pliers if you want to make a larger loop you will use this part here which is larger so now I am creating this loop like this and I'm not closing it first of all I will take this uh, loop which is also not finished not closed I put it through this eye here through this loop and now I am going to grab it with the pliers and close the loop like this as you can see I have closed the loop and I have connected the two pins together to make a pair of dangle earrings and now to uh, finish the earring I will put the um, fish hook ear wire on this loop here which I haven't closed yet so I put the fish hook ear wire here and now I will grab again the uh, round nose pliers the loop like this and I have created the first earring so this is the first dangle earring wedding earring and now let's continue by making the second earring again I will take the pin the hair pin and put the pearl the teardrop pearl and check the length so I will cut a bit of this pin with the cutting pliers like this so this is the bit I have cut and with the remaining pin I will create a loop by first taking the chain nose pliers the one that is flat inside here I will grab the pin and bend it to 90 degrees like this so this is the first step in creating the loop on the pin so first of all you have to bend it to 90 degrees like this and the second stage is to take to grab the um, the pin with the round nose pliers the end of the pin with the round nose pliers and start creating the loop like this now I have left the loop open like this I have not closed the loop yet and I will take the eye pin and uh, put the first pearl the larger pearl and then the smaller pearl like this the two spherical pearls and now we have to cut a bit of the uh, pin here so I will again grab the pliers and cut this little bit of the pin and now I have a shorter pin here and I will grab the chain nose pliers and bend the pin like this it has to be bent in the same direction as the other loop
like this. So if the first loop is this way, the pin has to be to go in the same direction so that the two uh, loops will be um, symmetrical. Now that I've bent the pin, I will take the round nose pliers and grab the end of the pin and start making a loop. And now I will take the first pearl and put So, I will take this pearl and put the pearl on the, the, the unfinished loop uh, on the other loop and now I will close the first loop using the round nose pliers and I've created the first loop I've closed the first loop and created this part of the earring so all we have to do is attach the um, fish hook ear wire. So I will take the fish hook ear wire and put it on this loop, this unfinished loop, and I will close this loop too. Like this. So now we have finished both earrings. And this is what the wedding earrings, dangle earrings with white pearls look like. So, so as you can see, you only need a few findings and a few tools to create this uh, nice pair of wedding earrings. Now you can enjoy we wearing your uh, handmade uh, earrings. Hello and welcome to this video. I will show you in this video how to make a pair of um, handmade earrings uh, using crystals. So these are some um, uh, transparent crystals that you can uh, use to make a pair of wedding earrings. In order to make those earrings I have chosen this uh, teardrop crystal I've also chosen this long crystal and this rounded crystal As findings, we are going to use some eye pins. They are called eye pins because they have this small loop here, which looks like an eye. And uh, this eye has the role of connecting this pin to another pin so that you can create dangle earrings. So all you will have to do is make a loop on this other pin and attach the loop to the eye of your first pin. So you will connect them like this. And you will make dangle earrings. The pin is used for uh, putting the beads on it. As you probably knew, and let's see the other type of pin that we are going to use. This little pin looks like a nail. I don't know if you can see it. And um, the head of this nail gives the name of the pin. It is called the head pin. So you can also put beads on this pin and make a pair of nice earrings. Beside the two pins, I will use. Uh, I will also use another type of finding, the uh, fish hook ear wire. This uh, ear, uh, this ear wire is called fish hook ear wire or French ear wire, and it is used to for hanging the earring on your ear. So, beside the findings and the beads, the crystals. You will also need the tools for making the jewelry. 
And now let's talk about the tools. The first tool and the most important tool for anyone who makes uh, handmade jewelry is this type of pliers. These pliers are called the chain nose pliers and they are used for bending metal. For example, if you want to bend your uh, wire, you will use this, uh, chain -nose, uh, this pair of chain nose pliers. And um, they are also used for opening and closing jump rings and for any other operation that means um, handling your metal uh, parts of the jewelry, the findings. The chain nose pliers have a characteristic, they have no teeth on the inside of the pliers. So, um, if uh, all pliers have uh, teeth inside, this type of pliers has no teeth inside and the reason for, uh, the reason why these uh, pliers are flat inside is that this prevents the pliers from scratching the pins and any other metal parts that you are working with. Um, they also have a small spring here which opens the pliers after you have used them. Beside the chain nose pliers you will also use the cutting pliers and they are used for cutting the wire. And uh, the third type of pliers that I wanted to show you are the round nose pliers which are rounded at the end and um, they are used for creating this type of loops. And in order to create the loop you simply grab the end of the pin and twist it around these ends and you will end up having these loops. So, if you see the shape of the, this pair of pliers, these pliers are narrower towards the top and wider towards the base. This means that if you want to make a loop uh, and you make it towards the top of your pliers, the loop will be smaller. If you make the <coughs> loop towards the base of the pliers, it will be larger. So, you can decide exactly on which part of these pliers you want to make your loop. And they also have a um, spring and this time this spring does not look like a coil, it looks like two sheets of metal that meet here in the middle. And now that I've uh, shown you what um, findings uh, we need, what um, beads we need, what um, tools we need. Now let's begin making the uh, earrings themselves. So first of all I will begin by taking a pin and putting a head pin and putting the uh, teardrop crystal on the pin. I will measure the length of this uh, pin and I will try to cut just a bit of the uh, pin. So for cutting the end of the pin I've used the uh, cutting pliers but I only needed to cut a bit of this pin. The second tool that I will use are the chain nose pliers and I will grab the pin and bend it to 90 degrees like this in order to create a loop. Now, let's take an eye pin and put the other crystals like this on the eye pin and again I will measure this eye pin and this eye pin is long enough it doesn't need cutting with the cutting pliers anymore 
and I will begin making the loop here as well. I will bend the pin. Uh, you should be careful when, when bending your pins because with crystals uh, it may there is the risk that uh, they may break small parts of the crystal may break and now I will take the first um, crystal and I will create the loop I will grab the end of the pliers of the pin with the pliers and I will start to roll this pin around the end of the pliers and I will put the next part the second pin on this loop on the loop that I have begun, begun to make and now I will have to close this loop with the other pin attached. I will take again the round nose pliers and turn this loop like this until I have closed it. And now the two parts, the two pins are attached and I have created this part of the dangle earring like this. And now I have to also make a loop on this end. So as I've told you I bend this uh, pin to 90 degrees and now I will start making the loop by grabbing the end of the pin like this and turning it around. And let's continue turning the pin around like this and I have created this little hook and now let's attach the fish hook ear wire. I have put the fish hook ear wire on this small hook and now I will close the hook I will create the loop like this and now I have created the loop and attached the fish hook ear wire to the rest of the earring. So this is our first earring, wedding earring using white crystals and now let's continue by creating the second earring. I will take the next, the second head pin, put the pearl on the head pin and I will check if the um, pin is long enough. Now the pin, this pin is long enough so I will not have to cut uh, the pin with the cutting pliers. I will take the next tool, the chain nose pliers and I will grab this pin and bend it to 90 degrees in order to create the loop. I will take the second eye pin, put the crystals on the eye pin like this and I will measure this pin. This pin is long enough so I won't have to cut it either and let's create the second loop so uh, you can leave a bit like one millimeter between the point where you want to bend the pin and the last crystal because as I've told you the crystal might break otherwise. So I will bend the pin to 90 degrees And now let's create this loop and attach the first pin to the second. I will take the teardrop pearl and grab the end of the pearl of the sorry of the crystal. I'll grab this end of the pin and start rolling the pin around the pliers. Now before I close before I close the 
loop I will put this pin on the loop and close the loop and now I have attached these two pins together now let's create the second loop here I will grab the end of the pin with the round nose pliers and start rolling the end of the pin like this and I've created this hook on this hook I will put the fish hook ear wire like this so like this I put the fish hook ear wire on this hook that I've created here and now let's close the loop here so that the fish hook ear wire doesn't fall off anymore like this and now the second earring is also ready And now let's see the two uh, finished earrings, wedding earrings, with white crystals. So as you can see, using two pins, a head pin and an eye pin, you have created a pair of dangle earrings, because you have connected the two loops here. And then you all you had to do was attach the fish hook ear wires or the French ear wires to the rest of the earrings so these are the crystal wedding earrings